Your Excellency Maki Sal, President of Senegal. Your Excellency Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda. Your Excellency Felix Shishikedi, President of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Right Honorable Dr. Ruhakana Rugunda, Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda. Your Excellency, the First Lady of Mali, Mrs. Keita Aminata Maiga. First Lady of the Republic of Guinea, Mrs. Konde Jene Kaba. President of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akiumi Adishino. All of our state governors present, members of the National Assembly. The founder of the Tony Elumelu Foundation and Chairman Ayers Foundation, Mr. Tony Elumelu, and his dear wife, Mrs. Awele Elumelu, Your Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, uh, the head of the civil service of the Federation, captains of industry, all of our young men and women of the Tony Elumelu Entrepreneurship Forum 2019, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. No matter how young or old we might be, our lives are essentially stories that are being written and revised every day. And those stories range from what is to what could be, from the reality we are born into to the realities and the ambitions and dreams that we create, that we desire and those that we strive to achieve. As I prepared for this event, I encountered a few of the very many stories of businesses and lives transformed by the Tony Elumelu Foundation and its various initiatives. We have Mavis Onduchua, who trained for the hospitality industry and went on to a career as a TV presenter and is today a successful farmer with the goal of feeding her native Botswana. A decade ago, a Nigerian, Zion Oshiobugye, looked ahead at life as a domestic servant for a family member in Lagos. Today, he is a proud CEO of a consulting company based in that same city where he started out as a domestic servant. There is, there is Mohamed Daufi of Morocco, the founder of a 3D printing company that produces affordable artificial limbs. Every day, he makes it happen for someone. Every day, he gives life to someone who, who had thought that all life was lost when they lost their limb. In Cameroon, there is Michel Nkodija. He actually tells and retells stories for a living through his Nokima Game Studios, which develops video games that are based on traditional African myths and legends. His goal is to change the way Africa is perceived globally and to give young Africans a reason to be proud of their cultural identities. Across the continent, in Uganda, Joel Cherup is a farmer pushing the boundaries of agriculture, using irrigation technologies through the Atari River Integrated Irrigation Initiative Limited. Every day, he makes a difference in farming in his country. Again from the DRC is Lino Alain Munionu, who used seed capital to start an agricultural firm and Jose Kimalo, who founded WapiMed, a health tech company, providing quality health care across communities in the DRC. Benin Republic is Vital Sunovo, promoting trade across Africa with this fintech startup that's called Exportunity, a virtual market that is now directly supported by a leading African banking institution, the UPA. In the age of the African continental free trade area, 
In the age of the African continental free trade area, there is perhaps no bigger or better opportunity to be exploring right now. And then there are the hundreds who are here. These stories are just a few of the thousands told and experienced by entrepreneurs whose lives have been touched and transformed by the Tony Elumelu Entrepreneurship Program, TEP. And even all of those thousands of inspirational TEP stories are themselves just a representation, just a fraction of what is out there across the continent. A landscape that is emboldened by multitudes of young people who are refusing to wallow in self-pity or frustration, who have realized that the conquering of the challenges of the environments are the milestones for outstanding success. Young men and women who have come to fully understand the transformational power of technology in the 21st century. Here in this room, there's a great representation of what the private sector can accomplish. It's also hugely inspiring to us as governments. And I'm glad that a number of African governments are represented here. We're challenged to create the enabling environment for all of these young entrepreneurs to thrive. Our continent continues to be defined by the unsavory and unwholesome stories, which do not often accurately represent the reality of life and opportunity. The people in this room are the perfect, long-awaited counterpoints to those one-dimensional narratives of Africa that have sadly gained ground over the years. Outside on the streets of every village, town, and city in Africa, there are many more individual embodiments of the potentials of this great continent. But we can change some of the false and some of the, of the true but unfortunate narratives of Africa. We must find young entrepreneurs and provide opportunities for capacity building. Our school curriculums must emphasize not just science, technology, engineering, and maths, which we're doing now, but critical thinking and entrepreneurship. And the promise of entrepreneurship banks, the promises that we've made about establishing entrepreneurship banks must be kept. By birthing this intervention, by birthing this particular intervention, Tony has compelled us to focus on what really matters, our youth and their dreams. And the message to Africa's emerging business giants is a clear one. How and what can you contribute to empowering the next generation, helping them, helping them to realize their own dreams? And you who are gathered here in this room, helping you write, rewrite, and revise the next chapter of your continent-changing stories. But permit me a word to you, young entrepreneurs, uh, as I take my seat. I want to say to you that you live in the best of times and always be suspicious of those who remind us all the time of the good old days. They are probably suffering from a bit of memory loss. Farid Zakaria, our moderator today, made a fascinating statement to the 2012 graduating Harvard class where he made the commencement speech. He said that the smartphones that the young men and women in that room that day had in their hands had more power than all of the computing power in the Apollo aircraft that landed the first men on the moon. Today, as we waited out here, I reminded him of that statement, and his reply was, yes, that was 2012. Today, the smartphones that the young men and women here today have has a hundred times more power than all of the computing power of the Apollo aircraft that landed men on the moon. So, so today is the most advanced moment in human history. And your generation is the smartest that has ever lived. We're holding our breaths for the incredible achievements that you will make. God bless Africa. Thank you.